So um, what you want to look for when you are buying a metal detector is, I would say the top thing that's really important is the discrimination feature. That is a feature of professional metal detectors. Um, they don't necessarily have to be really expensive to have that feature, but basically you see all these metals up here. Well, these are, these are categories, okay? Um, there's some metal detectors that have like numbers, but the categories I think are nice. It gives you an idea of what it could be. Um, the discrimination means that, and see it's, it's listed here, right there. You can ignore certain metals that you do not want. For instance, I always ignore iron here on the left because that's a lot of rusty nails and whatnot. Now, some people may not want to ignore it because they're looking for um, old relics. This pinpointer button, I use it all the time. It helps to narrow it down more. It also tells you the depth in inches. Um, you know, when I first find a target, now I have the depth here in arrows. Some metal detectors actually have the depth in inches. Um, this one, you know, it just has it in arrows. Like if there's one arrow, it's, you know, on the surface. If it's two arrows, it's close to the surface. If it's three arrows, it's deeper. And I don't dig if it's three arrows because from my experience, it's been like more than six inches. And by the way, um, this metal detector detects up to like nine inches down um, for a coin-shaped object. And the pinpointer button and the depth um, indicator that's calibrated to like a coin sized object. Now, if you have like a smaller object than a coin or like a larger object, then you have to figure that out as to how far down it would be. But um, some other things that you want to look for when you're buying a metal detector is if it detects in wet salty sand because that is highly mineralized earth and if you are really looking to do that um, then you then you want to look at the metal detectors that can do that um, this one is not designed to do that um, but yeah the more sophisticated ones um, can and they are more expensive so if that's really important to you just look into that now this does detect in dry salty sand so if you do go to the beach, you can use it on the dry salty sand and you can use it um, in the wet, fresh water sand. So if you go to like a lake beach, you can use it on that wet sand, you know, or like a river or something. Um, some other things you want to look for is if it's waterproof. I think most of them are like the coil at least. Um, well, well mo most of the coils are waterproof, like submersible. I would say most of the, the housing is not submersible, but, but um, yeah, so this is not waterproof, so you can buy covers for them, or you can just use like a plastic bag if it's raining or something like that. Um, another big thing is the weight of it, and I really didn't think about that when I first got this one, but I'm lucky. I'm really lucky I got this one. I kind of got it by chance. I really didn't look into them, but um. This one is about 2.4 pounds. Now, some of them are like 5 pounds. Like, I don't know. I, you know, I just don't have much strength in my upper body. So, this is awesome for me. But, yeah, even like anyone, like, you would get more fatigued, you know, sweeping that metal detector over and over and over again, you know, throughout the day. Um, even if it's just like a couple more pounds. Um, so... Yeah, okay, so another thing that's nice with this one is you can detach it. And actually, you can adjust the height too, but you can detach it right here. And you can store it better than in like two parts. Actually, one other thing that's really important, I think, is is customer service. Because I've had some bad experience with some companies. It's just they leave you hanging and it's terrible. This has really good customer service. I mean, I can vouch for them. I've called them several times and like everyone is like so helpful and informative. And, um, it also has like a five year limited warranty. Like some of the metal detectors have like a two year warranty. So, um, I think those are the top things that are the most important, um, you know, other than price. Um, now let me show you how I got mine. Um, I got mine in a kit. Okay. So just to let you know, you can buy covers. Um, to like protect them and stuff like that. I've never used it. I probably should. Okay, so my kit came 
um, with a bag, which I like. I like that bag. It's helpful. Um, of course, it came with a manual. Um, and it came with those headphones and it came with that pin pointer. Now, you can use any headphones. You can use any earbuds, just as long as they are compatible with a fourth inch jack that is on this metal detector. Um, now you don't want to use earbuds or earphones if you're like in a high danger area where you need to be hearing the outside sounds. Now let's talk about this pin pointer. If you buy this pin pointer, you are wasting your money, okay? I don't like the bad talk products, but this, this pin pointer only detects an object if it is very 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 close to it okay so it's I guarantee you you're gonna be frustrated with it okay and then you're gonna end up buying another pin pointer um, I did not know about all this you know before I got this because I didn't know anything about metal detecting before I got this and I, I did end up getting a Garrett Pro pointer AT the Garrett carrot and I'm very happy with what my setup is I'm very happy with the the handheld pinpointer that I have and I'm very happy with this um, metal detector. I'm very happy with it. Um, so let me just demonstrate here. Okay, where did my quarter go? Okay, there it is. Okay, see? My quarter is right there. Um, okay, so, well, let's just, let's just talk, whoops, okay. Let's just talk about this control panel. Another thing that's important is, do you like the control panel? Do you like looking at it? I like this control panel. You know what, I, I really do like this LCD panel and it has the brassy stripe there, the gold stripe there, the silver stripe there. So that kind of tells you, ooh, if, it, if a metal is popping up here, that could be in the gold. If a metal pops up, ooh, it could be silver. Um, I like this layout, I, I just do. Um, okay, so that's the battery indicator. Um, Okay, so basically, do you see these four menu items? Sensitivity, volume, discrimination, and notch. Okay, so let's talk about that. Okay, so first the sensitivity. Um, I, I called the guy at the company and he said, you know, wherever you go, you can start at the maximum, which is 10. And if you get electromagnetic interference from like power lines and whatnot, then you can go down. Now, if you get too, too much EMI, electromagnetic interference, you'll get like erratic beeping it'll sound like ee -oo, ee -oo, ee -oo, ee -oo. you know like really really erratic and you're not even like trying to detect yet and all this stuff and then you can go down I always keep my sensitivity at seven uh, maybe I should play around with it but I'm just gonna keep it simple and keep it at seven for now um, the volume is the next one that's pretty much self-explanatory so if you don't have any earbuds or earphones connected to this Everyone can hear it, but if you put the earbuds or earphones in, only you can hear it. Okay, this next one, and to go down, you just, you just use the menu button. Okay. So, and then of course you use the plus and minus to go up and down. Okay, so the discrimination, let's talk about that. So, discrimination is ignoring certain metals that you want to ignore. For example, iron. Okay, so that's the first one on the left, and if you want to reject you know ignore iron you just make sure the dot is on discrimination and press the plus button but bam it goes away this is not going to detect any iron or it you know it will not detect the majority of iron at least okay if you want to you know ignore these going from left to right you can keep pressing the plus button Okay, so that eliminates a lot of the trash items because a lot of the trash items are on the lower tones. And by the way, this will emit three different sounds according to what it is. But I have to tell you that the gold is also in this range. So you, unfortunately, you got to dig the trash to get the gold. Now, there are special gold metal detectors. If that's your thing, then you might want to look into a gold metal detector. Um, so, but these are like the coins and the silver and whatnot. So let's... Let's get those other ones back. Use the minus button. Get those back. Okay. So let's go down to notch. That's very similar to discrimination. However, instead of going from left to right, I don't know if I said this before, but you cannot, you're not able to ignore the four on the right because those are usually the desirable ones. Um, okay. So notching, you can like notch out certain ones over here. 
and ignore them if you so desire. I usually don't use the notch because I'm only ignoring the iron. Like that's the only thing that I ignore usually. But say you want to ignore like the foil, that's going to be the first one to ignore when you press the plus button. So if I press the plus button, see how it's blinking? If you wait, it'll go away. Okay, so you're not going to find, you know, the majority of foil wrappers. But I have to say that I have heard that like, you know, if you notch out foil wrappers, then you could miss a diamond ring possibly. Okay. All right, so let's just demonstrate here. Um, I'm going to... Okay, get that back. Okay, I am gonna just eliminate um, iron just because I don't want to pick up any other metals in this area. So I'm just gonna demonstrate here. You just basically sweep parallel to the ground and you're, you're gonna get a repeatable signal if you get a good object. Here we go. Do you see it has one arrow, it's on the surface of the ground, and then it said 25 cents. And that number said like 77 or something. Uh, I usually don't look at the numbers. Um, that doesn't matter to me. So um, if you get like weird erratic sounds, it's, it's usually a trash item according to the manual. But see, that same beep over and over and over again. Okay, now let me just d demonstrate how you use the pinpointer button and basically what you do is you need to so say this is like a buried object okay you think it's like in this general area you just put the metal detector to the side and then what you need to do is press this button and then hold and then bring it to that area you don't need a sweeping motion for the pinpointer button it can be motionless but you got to work fast because if you hold this button for a long time it will begin to not work and then you got to release the button and then start all over again. I learned that a while back. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'll do that again. But did you see that basically? Okay, so um, the noise changes when it gets really loud. That's when it's right over it. And um, it will tell you in inches how close it is. So we'll get from two to one and then maybe even zero. And then if it's right over it, it'll have those flashing dashes. Here we go again. Okay. So at that point you take your um, digger and you take your handheld pinpointer and then you find the object.